Okay, it looks like we're live, folks. Just looking here. Give everybody a sec here to get signed in because we're right on seven. All right. Right, right on time tonight. There, there we, we are. are. I, I see, see myself, myself over, over here. here. No, no notification just, just went, went out. out. What's, What's going, going on? on? Well, it was a bit of a non-bus week. I got to get caught up on everything else around here uh, this week, so... Here we go, and now we're live. Got the notification. Let's uh, mm -hmm. let's just give our viewers a few more secs here to sign in. There we go. They're starting to come in now. We got lots of hellos. Yep, yep. audio, audio sounds, sounds good. good. Yeah, no echoing tonight. That's great. Somebody says echoes from Sage. I don't know if they're kidding or serious. Is it sounds fine over here. Uh, uh, actually, actually, sometimes, sometimes if you've, if you've got, got the uh, uh, Skype, Skype and, and your mic, mic up at the same, same time, time, I'll echo. echo. Okay, hang on. So, so Phil's, Phil's from North, North Carolina. Carolina. I, see I see Dennis, Dennis in this, this evening. evening. Uh, uh, we've, we've got, got uh, Gino's, Gino's Garage. garage. Is with, with us. Sage, have you got an audio source live? No. no. Try, Try that. that. Let's see if that fixes it. I guess, I guess I'll, I'll try, try talking, talking right, right now. now. If, if, uh, if, if, basically, basically, what, what I've, I've had, had to do is just take the Skype feed and not, not the local mic, mic feed. feed. And then and still, still echoing, echoing, I guess. I guess. The only feeds I have are the NDI sources coming in. Right, right but, but if you, you have, have your, your mic and the Skype, Skype up at the same, same time, time, I'll, I'll become an, an echo. echo. So, so there's, there's just one, one audio, audio feed. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I don't know. That's, uh, I mean, I, mean, I, can, I can switch, switch over, over to headphones. headphones. Okay, I'm just going to mute yours for a sec. And... So I'm really echoey, I guess. Yeah, I've muted you for a sec, and let's see if that makes it go away, and that'll tell me if it's on my end or your end. All right, I can just do this. But uh, right. let's, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, let's, uh, we've got a special... I can, I can run headphones if it's going to help. It, it probably will. Um, but uh, that's all I'm doing is just running, just running headphones. This is really weird. Apparently we've still got an echo coming in. Hmm. All right, just bear with me for a sec. Let's turn everything off. Well, it, it wouldn't be Sunday dinner without some kind of technical. <laughs> what we should, should do, do is, uh, I don't, I don't know, know if there's, there's any way to test, test it. The problem is once you go, go live. live. Oh, oh, the echo, the echo is, is gone, gone now. now. According, According to Gino. Gino. Echo is and getting, getting good. good. Lots, Lots of good, of good. So, so I think we're, we're there, there whatever, whatever you did. did. I didn't do anything at my end. I'm just looking through all the settings to make sure everything's set up right. So hopefully that did it. Okay. okay. Well, well, I switched, I switched over, over to headphones, headphones, so I don't, so I don't know if that, that changed anything. Okay. Anything, but, uh, well, look, we're, good. we're good. So welcome, welcome to, to Sunday, Sunday dinner. dinner. I'm Sage, and he's Jason, and uh, uh, we, we do this, this every uh, Sunday, Sunday for about 7, 7 o'clock since what? what about, about, uh, uh, boy, boy, we've been, been doing this since Yeah, it's been about two months now that we've been doing this. We started on the road when we were down in Texas, I think, was the first one we did. Yeah, yeah when, when I, we, we pulled, pulled the, shirt the shirt out of the door. Yeah, that, that, that was, was the day. Very first, I remember that. That was, that was the very first, first one. one so. So. Well, well, that's, that's cool. cool. So, uh, uh, what's, what's been, been going, going on, on this week? week? Uh, not a lot of bus stuff. A lot of other stuff I had to get done around here. But um, I did do a little bit on the bus, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's, um, let's introduce our special guest tonight. Uh, we've got special guest bus old man Phil joining us tonight. So, uh, come on in, Phil. Good evening, Good evening, everybody. everybody. What, what a pleasure, pleasure to, to be here with, with you, Jason, and, and Sage. <laughs> what, what a pleasant what experience. experience. I, I hope everybody's, everybody's well out there, there in cyberspace, cyberspace as, as I am, am. And, and it's a pleasure, pleasure to be, to be here. here. <laughs> Phil, Phil, what's, what's so, so funny? funny? What, what, was, what, what was, was the hat? hat? Let's, Let's see, see the hat. hat. 
the hat. The hat. <laughs> oh, this, this is my uh, other, other Easter, Easter hat. hat. This, 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 this is, is the one, one that, that I carry, carry the Easter, Easter bunny, bunny in. in. Sometimes, Sometimes when I open, I open it up quickly, quickly a, a bird, bird flies, flies out. out. And, and I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta ask, ask you, that's, that's a, a mighty, mighty sharp, sharp smoker's, smoker's jacket. jacket. Where, 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 did, where you did you get, get that, that coat? That, that is, 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 is that, that velvet? velvet? Or is, or is that, that, what is that? that? Yes, yes, it's, it's velvet. velvet. It, it came, came from, from uh, uh, um, uh, I, well, I, can't I can't think of the name, name of the star, star right, right now. now. Virginia Circular. Whatever. One of my favorite. It's got, it's got red, red piping, piping on it, and that's, that's a that's that's, that's a, a sharp sharp, uh, sharp, sharp smoker's, smoker's jacket, jacket you're wearing tonight. tonight. All right, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I, I I want to be, be smoking, smoking hot, hot here, here, so I put, put on my smoking, smoking jacket, jacket here. here. I, don't I don't want to dull, dull you guys, guys off. Of existence. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think, think that's possible. Well, it's nice to be here. Hi, everybody. Hello, folks. Nice to have you all here, boys and girls. Except, Except Skype. Skype. Skype should, should be, be the, the only audio, audio source. source. Hmm. I, don't I don't hear, hear any echo, echo here. here. No, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the, way the way the software, software works. works. Okay, okay, there, there now. now. Yeah, yeah, just just, just look, look, scroll, scroll up, and up and down, down make sure you have, have every input, input source, source listed. Because sometimes, sometimes they fall off the bottom, bottom and you're actually, you've, you've got, got two, two audios going, going and that's, that's what creates, creates the echo. echo. Are, you, Are you, running you running YouTube on your, on your computer? computer? Okay. okay. Do, you Do you have, have YouTube, YouTube on, on another, another device, device and you didn't turn, turn down, down the speaker? Okay. okay. That's, that's it. That's all I can help you with. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Put that, Put that to, to the, the checklist, checklist next week. <laughs> well, I think okay. we, I think we've got this sorted by the time that uh, YouTube catches up. Um, so let's uh, let's just give this another sec here and see if we've got this sorted. Sorry about that, folks. Um, oh. what, that what that does, does is it chases, chases off anybody, anybody with the two diehards. Die <laughs> anybody, anybody like watches, watches this, this. Oh, oh, I, I can't, can't stand, stand that. They quit. quit. So. so. Is, is, there is there any way, way you can, can catch me up? up? It looks, looks like I'm about, about a minute and, and a half, half behind here, here on my, my video. video. Oh, oh you, yeah, yeah, YouTube is always, always delayed. delayed. You're, that, that's just, just you're going to have to, to deal, deal with that, that I guess. But, but, uh, is it just showing up on my monitor? Am I really in sync with you guys, though, as it's going out? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Yep, 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 yep. So, so. Anyway, anyway, well, well so, so, Phil, Phil uh, what, what you been, been up to? to? Well, well, last, last weekend, weekend we brought, brought a 4106 back, back from, from St. Louis, Louis, or from, from Washington, Washington Missouri. Well, St. Well, Louis, Louis, yeah. yeah. We uh -huh. stopped in Washington, Washington Missouri, Missouri, and, and that, that I posted late, late yesterday, yesterday, so it should, so it should be, be on now. now. It, it, 4106 or 4104? A 4104. I never, I never know, know what, what I'm saying. saying. Oh. oh, so, so uh, I, you know, it, yeah, it, it is right. a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous bus. bus. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. It's just, just uh, we, did we did some, some work, work on it when, when we, we got, got to American, American Coach Lines in, in Washington, Washington, Missouri. I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure if it's Lines or Company. Or company. Uh, so, so we got, got it on the pit, and their mechanic Gene. Gave, gave it a, a grease, grease job, job and checked, checked the uh, differential and uh, adjusted, adjusted up, up the brakes. brakes. And, and then, then him and I repaired the heating system because Stan, Stan had, had his wife and baby with him. With him. And uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure Stan, Stan wanted to drive, drive the bus back, back so we got, we got the heating system, system on, on the bus working. working. So, so that, that was okay. And then, then we tinkered around, around with a couple of other options and the emergency stop, the... The, the amphenol connector, connector on, on the emergency, emergency stop, stop was, was corroded, corroded. And, and we got, we got that, that fixed, and there was, there was one, one other thing. thing. Oh, when, when we, we got, got to Washington, Washington Tennessee, Tennessee, or Washington, Washington Missouri, we discovered one, one airline leaking, leaking and, and we got, got that, that fixed. So, uh, that, that was it. it. Tires, Tires were all pressured up, up. Everything, everything was ready to go, drove it back with just one little incident. 
when, when we, we were, were about, about four miles, miles from, from uh, where, where we departed, departed in St. Louis, Louis. Uh, I, didn't I didn't have, have the camera, camera on. on. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting, expecting this, this, but it started, started getting, getting a bluish white, white smoke. And it, it, it just got, got worse, worse and worse. worse. And, and when, when he, he left from a light, light there, there was so much, much blue smoke that, that I, had I had to back, back off. off. I, was I was driving, driving his, his car. car. Uh, and I had, I had to back, back off. off. I, I couldn't, couldn't see. I never, I never saw, saw so much smoke in my life. life. I really, it, it scared me. me. I, I thought, thought something happened. happened. And, and it cleared up. up. And, 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 and not, not a puff of smoke, smoke the, rest the rest of the trip, trip to American. American. And then and just, just a little, little bit of smoke when we left, left America and ran perfectly clean the rest of the way home. home. So, so what do you think it was? Stuck ring? I haven't a clue. It just may be a big glob of oil that broke loose from the air box or something like that. That's the only thing I can imagine. Considering the design of the engine. Hmm. So anyway, uh, Jason told me some things to do, so uh, just, uh, this, this was, was part of it. Oh, you, you gave him some rules, rules Jason? Jason? Rules to follow. I don't know about these. Oh, oh teeth. teeth. Yes. yes. You know, you know I, I, don't I don't think we really, really care, care about the socks, but we're, we're not going to see your feet. feet. Don't, don't sneer. sneer. Okay. okay. Look at the camera. That's always a good one. I think that's just a given anywhere. Okay. okay. Now, now I'm, I'm ready. ready. Well, well, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so, Jason, you, you don't, don't have, have echo, everybody, everybody else does. does. So, so, if, if you've got... got uh, I, don't I don't have, have echo. echo. No, 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 you, you won't, won't hear, hear it, Phil. Phil. This, this is, is this is the production, production software, software he uses to put, put it out, out onto YouTube. YouTube. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Except, Except Skype, Skype should, should be the, the only audio, audio source, source that you see wiggling. wiggling. Is, there is there any chance that my tablet... Even, Even though, though I have, I have that my audio, audio muted, muted, is there, there any chance, chance my tablet is feeding no, audio in? No, because we would hear it on Skype. That, that's okay. the only way we yeah. would, would feed back, back in, in is if, we, if, if it came, came down, down the Skype, Skype line. line and... All right. All right. And... And, and I don't know how that's, that's possible, possible because, because I'm wearing headphones. headphones. Like, there's, there's no... I mean, I mean, there's, there's no, no way, way for, for him, him to, to, get to get through, through me. me. I see. And I think he's a big time. Um, you, know, you know, as, as a, a uh, to, do to do these things. things and, and then it, 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 it just, just it's, it's, this software, software is somehow. I'm not sure. I just reset everything and let's see if that fixes it. Um. Just totally reset all the mic levels. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the viewers say now. You didn't oh, have that one. one. Oh, you you know, nose picking. That, 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 that's thought of it. I never that's on our list. list. I don't, I don't think, think of my nose, nose very often. often. I, I guess, guess that's, that's what it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Uh, uh, is this the bus? I know we're having some. some I know issues we're having hearing some, it, but is this the bus that, that is this uh, the bus that um, was um, at the was uh, at Lival the bus rally, uh, last Lival year? bus rally last year? That uh, that uh, uh, they were doing uh, some weird they were auction. doing some weird auction. Were you at that show? Were you at that show? Last, 
Last yes, I was. Yes, I, I was. But I can't answer and I don't question. I don't know. That some guy. Do you remember that some guy was sell, trying to like, sell raffle tickets like, to buy raffle tickets to buy his bus? It wouldn't have been. It that, wouldn't have been guys. That, these guys. Oh, because this guy was. Oh, I thought this guy was. I thought out of Missouri. Okay. Well, okay. it might have. Well, been. it might have. Stan been. would know. Stan yeah. would know. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember, remember that, that forty-one one oh six B there. Okay. okay. Or, or 4104. Because there, there were two really, really nice trailways, trailways buses. buses. One, one was Tom McNally's. And then, and then, then there, there was, was another, another trailways, trailways bus that, that was there. Yes. And it was like a rolling museum. I know there was a guy there with a flexible Vissa liner trying, trying to, to sell, sell it. it. Mm. It says, Jason, Jason good, good Phil, Phil can't, can't hear you. You can't, can't hear me? me? No, no, it's just, just we're, we're echoing, echoing now. now. Okay, okay. The next, next one says, says it's it's well, the other, other option is you have, you have your general, general mic. mic. Jason, Jason, why don't you turn, you turn up your general, general mic and turn your, and turn your Skype, Skype down. down? Or mute, or mute your Skype, Skype and turn up your regular, your regular mic. mic. Your, your computer, computer audio. audio. Try, Try it that, that way. way. And, and also, it has says, says here, my audio is not with the picture. Oh, that you're not synchronized? Right. Right. Well, well, don't, don't your, your lips, lips just move, move that, that way? way? <laughs> I have a slightest <laughs> idea. idea. Oh, oh, well. Oh, oh man. man. So, Jason, so Jason you have, you have can, can, Jason's, Jason's on mute on Skype, on Skype because, because we can't, can't hear him. him. So... so Again, Again, you should, you should have, have an input, input that's just, just called mic or, or you know, you know, computer, computer sound. sound. I'm, I'm saying, saying turn, turn that, that up and turn, turn the Skype, Skype off. off. Try, Try that. that. Sure. So what uh, what we've been doing, um, yeah, I think that that's probably what it is. Oh, oh, all right. I can talk for a second. How does that sound? I think that's it. I, I think you can't use Skype as the audio source. You have to just use the base. I think that's how I fixed it last week. Yep, stage and filler, good. All right, so that's that's all that was. Um, all right, so so uh, what needs to be? You now we've been talking about this trailways that they got. What uh, uh, you guys got this trailways in Missouri and you brought it home. What what you guys been doing to it this week? Absolutely nothing. I haven't been there since we got it. Uh, oh, okay. It's just been too cold. Yeah. And uh, I don't know exactly what I'll be doing with it. I'm kind of anticipating laying off for the winter. Oh, yeah? There's no urgency to do anything with it right now. It's not going anywhere or plan on doing anything, so probably get back to it in the spring. That's what I expect. So uh, somebody said that Jason sounds better when we can't hear him. Oh, that's ter That's <laughs> terrible. We like you, Jason. We want to hear you. Anyway. Well, when I was eight years old, my mother put me on a streetcar at six o'clock one night after we had been downtown and she had dragged me through every department store open and she wanted to meet somebody and said,
And uh, I said, sure. So at 6th and Hennepin in downtown Minneapolis, she put me on a Como Harriet streetcar headed south. And I was living with my aunt near 31st in Hennepin. So I just knew where to get off the streetcar. We'd done it before. So I got on and I sat in the first seat right up front. It was six o'clock, so the crowds had thinned out. And I said, this is it. I'm, I'm going to hit every mile of trackage in the Twin Cities from that day on. And I did. I mowed lawns and earned 50 cents. And the streetcar fare for kids was seven cents. And that left me money enough to get back from wherever I ended up and to have a hamburger and a Coke at a White Castle. So that's how it started. Then in 1957, I went to work for Twin City Rapid Transit Company as a driver. And then I came back, I left, and then I came back and uh, worked at Nickla Garage as a mechanic. And then I left again. Then I wandered about the country driving buses for charter companies and came back home, got into building management, got a job with the city of Minneapolis as an operating maintenance engineer at the library. And I retired from there in 2001. And uh, it was a week after I retired. One week. I got a call from the Minnesota Transportation Museum, the superintendent of the classic bus operations, and he said, you're familiar with 1399. You fixed it when we got it back in 1983. We have two more buses here that we want you to come and look at. And that started this deal. The next thing happened was Stan Halter and his father, George, had donated a 5105 to the museum. And so I started working on that, and that's how Stan and I got familiar. There's a side story about that, but I don't want to get too long-winded here. And uh, so he came to see what I was doing with the bus, and we established a relationship and uh, he had another bus he wanted to give away. And I said, well, we're not going to pay 400 bucks to have it hauled over here. Why don't I just come over to the garage and work on it there? And that I did and drove it over to the museum. Then Stan asked me if I would work for him. He needed a mechanic. So that began a relationship with Stan and I. And that was in the spring of 2002. Mm -hmm. And I've been there ever since. I'm not a mechanic anymore on the revenue fleet. I concentrate now just on the vintage buses for Bus Boys Collection. Right. So, uh, boy, there's over a hundred. How do you how do you prioritize when you have that many projects? Because you think about it. I mean, he's he's got what he's got to have over a hundred classic buses, right? Yes, and most of them are not in any way, shape, or form uh, going to get restored. Uh, I'm concentrating just on the really good stuff like we got last week. We have five vehicles that are really good, that uh, Silver Sides, a 4104, 4106, a Flex Liner, a beautiful mc7 and i know there are a lot of mci guys out there and i know i don't pay much attention to you guys and i, I should I, I maybe this winter i'll give you mci guys more attention and uh those are the bosses and we'll probably keep one insured so we can do local charters and then i have the transit 1303 that you saw on my well it was actually the introduction to my channel, the uh, Bus Extravaganza, uh, Bus Grease Monkey, posted that in in November of 2019, and mm -hmm. that started me off. And then the next thing about that was my channel. So be sure and watch 
bus extravaganza. G GM bus extravaganza. GM bus extravaganza. And you can see the the uh, two of the buses I take care of. An old look and a new look. So and one of the three others. Yes, go ahead. Oh no, the one of the other questions is have you ever trained a new driver? Have you taught yes. people how to drive a bus? How does that go? Because yes. you you uh <laughs> I I I've seen you be patient and I've seen you be unpatient, <laughs> impatient. <laughs> so, so what, what, what basically, uh, where do you start when you're teaching somebody how to drive? Somebody is asking me, how did I learn how to drive or how was it when I first started driving a stick? And I had Scott, uh, a bus grease monkey right over my shoulder, kind of screaming orders at me the whole time. So it was a little nerve wracking, but, um, you got a double shift, at least on the coaches, not the, maybe not the, uh, the local buses. But what do you do? Because I guess most local buses, even back in the 50s, were, were automatic transmissions. Are, are there any stick uh, uh, buses these days? Not in transit. Okay. And I don't believe anybody now is manufacturing stick shift. I'm not aware of any of the major brands that have uh, that option. It was an option for a while. Uh, Mm -hmm. Around 1990, automatic transmissions became standard. Uh, as far as getting started driving, before you ever step foot on a bus with your car, practice making square turns. Mm -hmm. No more sliding through a whole intersection to make a turn. Practice making square turns. Drive up far enough until you can make a square turn. That means slowing down and making a sharp square turn. Now, next, pretend the rear wheels are 30 feet behind you and practice making sharp, square, right and left turns. And when you have that perfected, then I'm going to jump in your car with you and see how you've done. Because you ain't getting on a bus until I'm comfortable with you, how, where you handle your car. So the closest thing I ever did before I started driving a bus was, uh, I think, a U-Haul. And, you know, you, you jump, you go over the curbs for a while and stuff. Um, and and the, the buses, I mean, I've got 35 feet, but buses are like, they go to 45 feet these days. That's, I mean, you, you're way out in the middle of an intersection to make a, a corner on one of those, aren't you? Well, yeah, you are. But if you slow down and turn the steering wheel all the way, your bus will make a nice turn from one lane to the other without running over the curb. Uh, I'm not sure we specifically demonstrated that any more than if you watch about three videos back. I did a piece for the Long Brothers, and then I stuck in a little piece somebody wanted to see about double clutching or commenting. Mm -hmm. So I stuck in a little piece with the 4103. You may have seen that. And uh, there you can see me making right turns and making left turns. And uh, you'll follow the idea that your front wheels are four feet behind you and the rear wheels are 30 feet behind them, regardless of the bus being 40 or 45 feet. Uh, your car, your wheels are 10 feet, be, uh, 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 four feet ahead of you and six feet behind you. So... With the bus, it's a matter of just understanding the distance from your back wheels. So the front actually extends beyond the center of the intersection just briefly while you're making a right turn and extends toward the left lane or the far right of the lane you're turning left into. Hmm. So uh, a little practice. The biggest problem people have is slowing down don't turn any faster than you could walk well i know that's what you're yelling at me for when hmm. we took the test so drive the jason bus. must be on mute because i can see him move but we can't hear him um both jason and i have volkswagen buses and i mean it's no comparison or they're 12 feet long or 13 feet long but it's the same concept of you're sitting on your your drive wheels and your you know your other wheels are behind it 
Um, and double clutching is another, you know, when you're driving these older buses, that's certainly something that, uh, um, that's cer certainly something that you, uh, have to learn how to do is, you know, use the clutch to come out of gear and use the clutch to go into gear. So now they're saying that they, they heard Jason talk, but we can't hear him. Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. He's been sure. But the double double clutching is a is uh, is is there's a trick to it. I mean, you you have to. We uh, when Scott uh, uh, when Scott and and I went driving for the first time, he said you have to double clutch, and I didn't I didn't really have a problem because I double clutch my Volkswagens because they don't have synchros either. They're you know they're straight sticks, and so some of that learning that whole concept of you know putting it putting the clutch in to take it out of gear and then putting the clutch in and getting the revs at the right to put it back into gear um, is something that I learned. The thing that kills me still, and I, I still struggle with, is downshifting. Jason you know, got it figured out when we were up in Tennessee. He, he figured out how to downshift when we were going down hills and stuff into third gear. I still struggle with trying to figure out where that sweet spot is to get it back into to third when you're coming out of fourth going down a hill. Is there any, any secrets? Just remember how the engine sounded when you were in that gear before and if you have to shift back to that gear rev the engine up until it sounds similar then push the clutch in and shift and let the clutch out a lot of people buy tachometers which i can't stand and it doesn't improve your shifting anyway you need to learn how to do it in your head use your ears yeah, uh, and uh, it takes a while. It's not easy. But well, that's, you can do it. It's assuming you don't have Van Halen blasting, though. You know. Well, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> anyway, about <laughs> shifting now. Why yeah. I brought it up, double clutching. Uh, you're going to learn from me how to double clutch. You're going to start by rubbing your nose in a circle and scratching your ear vertical. And mm -hmm. when you can do that. Mm hmm. Then you can double clutch a bus. Circular yeah, and then, yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. You were spinning your. Well, tell me what I'm supposed to be doing here. Just rubbing. Rub your okay. Nose in a circle yeah. and vertically move your other finger up and down. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Do it, Jason. Come on, let's see you do it. <laughs> no? Uh -oh, uh -oh. He can't do it either. <laughs> Take his bus away from him. <sighs> Anyway, so, yes. Or you can walk and chew gum. That's it. That's what you do. Uh, there's a term called floating the gears. And you'll hear a lot of drivers say, oh, I never have to use a clutch. Now, we're talking about these old buses. We're not talking about new modern trucks with synchro transmissions. We're talking about, ah, I don't ever have to. Well, you're not going to float gears on my buses because when you do when you let up on the engine you're slamming the universal joints against the back uh, braking of the engine and when you drop it into gear then you're back slashing it again and then when you step on the accelerator you're forward slashing those u-joints so you're not going to do that you're going to double clutch any bus you drive for me okay well, I the last time I drove one of my buses, I, the flange ripped out. Actually, the U joint ripped out of the flange, and uh, the flange was messed up. That there was there were some problems with it. But I, I think I might have been driving, trying to shift through too fast. Even double clutching, you know, I, you get kind of used to trying to get through the gears as quickly as you can, and you just have to take your time with with buses with like Spicer fours. Um, anyway. So, uh, Jason, you want, I'll turn it back over to you if you've got some other stuff you wanted to, to talk about. Oh, well. uh, 
Okay, okay and then I, I have, have a comment. comment. I'm checking, checking some, some of those questions, questions that are directed, directed to me right, right now, now while we're busy with this. With this. Uh, if, if you'd, you'd like, like, you can direct, direct them, them to, me to me on my, my YouTube, YouTube channel, channel Bustle, Bustle Old Man and Phil. Phil. Uh, uh, just, just go, go to, to the current, current uh, video and ask, ask me questions, questions there. there. Uh, uh, and, and I don't, don't want to deal with that right now because... Uh, Jason, uh, Jason, Jason and Wade want to ask some questions. Some questions so, uh, I'll do that, I'll do that, that and, and answer, answer your questions, questions leading to me. You can, I'll, I'll do that on my own channel. So just put comments and questions on my channel. Okay, go ahead, Jason. So one of the, oh, he's going to. Uh, he, he's going to fiddle with his his mic for a second. Right. But one of the okay. things uh, he was asking pretty much about how you got into busing and stuff like that. Um, have, have writers changed? I mean, it, you know, buses went to not a lot of people had cars. Uh, public transportation was there because cars, you know, where people would have one car and two, two people would be working. So somebody would have to take transportation. H how has it evolved over the years? I guess you're referring to public transit. Yeah. Well, I drove last in 2003. I went to work for a bus company here in the Twin Cities that had contract for a few routes with Metro Transit. So I had a privilege of getting back into transit and it was so it was just really weird. I'm saying well, it, I felt like Rip Van Winkle, like I had been asleep for 40 years and woke up and here I am on the street with a city bus on a city route and all. And it just all came right back to me, the handling of the brakes, the doors of in and out of the curb, and looking in the mirrors for passengers at the back door. I did have to learn the new fare system and the new fare box, but it just, it was fun. I did that for a couple of years and then went to work full time for Stan. So uh, I did not notice much difference. There are people who are extremely self-centered and live lives in a constant state of irritation. And then there are people that just are so easy, just go with the flow. And, and uh, part of my route was one of the high schools. And as it was, I'd come through there and the high school kids. And if you start out good with the high school kids or start out good with anybody and you're going to get fall behind schedule. Some people deserve an explanation and some people deserve uh, the Brooklyn, what do they call it? Well, you know, uh, some people, uh, you know, like one guy, he said, you're over an hour late. And I said, well, I'll be damned. You did buy a watch after all. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Sure. No, I, uh, uh, to me, I used to ride Greyhounds, uh, when I was in school. I, I think I've told you that I grew up six miles from where, uh, the GM cuss or, uh, uh, bus and coach factory was. Um, okay. and so, yeah. So, I mean, when I was a kid, you would see them driving down the road, just down the street from me being delivered all over the place. And, you know, when I was in middle school, I think they were RTS, which was the last run that General Motors did before they got out of the business. Somebody asked me, did I ever drive in St. Paul? Yes, the 16 and the 21 lines, uh, Selby Lake and the Interurban. The Interurban was one of my favorite lines, and uh, we might get back to that if you wanted to ask me an experience. Uh, I, I have a a good transit experience about the 16 line, Jason. Sure, yeah, let, let's hear that experience if, if we can. Okay, well, it was a Minnesota Gophers football game day, and the 16 line is what's called the interurban. Uh, it began at that time on 10th and Hennepin in downtown Minneapolis, ran through downtown Minneapolis, ran through the University of Minnesota campus, past all the stadiums and all the activities, 
uh, onto University Avenue into downtown St. Paul, where you swing around the block and head back. So I leave the garage at 6 a.m. to start a trip at 6.30 a.m. from 10th and Hennepin eastbound. And already people are getting over to the university uh, employees. And so by the time I leave downtown Minneapolis, I have a full load. At 6 a.m. on an ordinary Saturday, you would leave downtown with maybe 12, 14 passengers. Half of them would get off uh, on the way to the U, and then you'd reload going through the U into downtown St. Paul, another 15, 20 passengers. Today I brought, or that day I brought a standing load to the U of M, emptied them out, and then there was some activity in downtown St. Paul. And when I got to the university city limits, I already had a seated load and had eight miles of the route left to go. Uh, I got downtown St. Paul with a jammed load. I am now 20 minutes behind schedule. There is no makeup time in downtown St. Paul. So I leave downtown 20 minutes late with a load for the university. This went on until six o'clock that evening I am now one complete round trip, two hours and 15 minutes behind schedule. There's a starter at 5th and Hennepin. It's 8.15 and he says, now which one are you? And I said, I'm 6 p.m. out of 10th. And he says, oh, you're only 15 minutes late. What? Two and a half hours late? He says, well, uh, can you keep going? I said, yeah. I got into the garage at 11 o'clock that night, driving a 5105 with no power steering. I c couldn't move. Oh, I imagine. I, that would be quite the I workout, could. man, because I know just driving that silver size around the lot once in a while was uh, enough on the arms. I couldn't imagine doing that all day long. You, you yeah. should have arms like Popeye. Yeah, I had I had change. I had dollar bills stuffed in every pocket, or not dollar bills, paper bills stuffed in. That we were making change at that man. time, you know. And I had change from the fare box that wouldn't fit in my changer anymore. I'm dumping it at a little handy tray we have. Uh, now I got a tray full of money, pockets full of money. It's 11 o'clock at night, and I got to go in to the shop and find something to carry all this stuff in. And when I got inside, he said, well, why did you come in so early? And I said, well, uh, he sent me home. And we spent a half an hour counting money, the clerk and me. Uh, so that was the busiest day I'd ever had. And now when snowstorms come, of course, then everything changes. So that's my interurban Route 16 story. Somebody asked about that, and so there you are. So what stopped you from just throwing a couple bucks in your pocket? I mean, it, it seems like that, that you could potentially steal money. I mean, it just amazes me that they just you just would shove it everywhere. There's no way to account for it? Well, you're making change, so you make change for a dollar, mm -hmm. uh, and the passenger has to deposit the money in the fare box. At that ah. time, the fare was 20 cents. And, and well, by the way, 20 cents in each city. Here's another part of the whole thing. Uh, whichever city you get on in, you drop your 20 cents in the fare box. Mm -hmm. Then when you leave, if you have traveled into the other city, you drop 20 cents in the fare box again. So anyway, so you're making change. The money that's dropped in the fare box is accounted for. And everything else is either change that went to the customer or change that you started your day with. So uh, you can't really steal, you get caught. Now, you could steal passengers and some people didn't pay. And there's another story about that. And I'll tell you how we have to load when we're crowded like that. But then on the other hand, uh, you know, I'm getting old and I'm going to assume room temperature soon. And I just don't want to get stopped at the Golden Gate with St. Peter asking me a lot of embarrassing questions. Good incentive. 
<laughs> I've been driving buses in transit for a total of five years on three different occasions. I've been driving charter buses a total of 15 years on six different occasions. One of the viewers is asking you, Phil, how long and I've been a mechanic all along here and there. Okay. All right. So you're mostly, most of your career was being a mechanic. Yes. Yes. That's true. Uh, building mechanic and bus mechanic. So what was your favorite bus in the, the one you, you hated the most as far as buses throughout your career? I used to know which one I hated the most. <laughs> I never really hated anything, any, any bus. Uh, I don't know. Probably the hardest bus to drive was those, I think they're called 780s or 780s. 86 whites, those big whites from the 40s huh. uh, with no power steering and a three-speed transmission and the heaviest clutch I've ever had to push on. Uh, you either shift into neutral to wait for a light or you wedge your hands between your knee and the steering wheel. And a lot of you drivers out there know about wedging your hand between the knee and the steering wheel. So that'll bring up some memory. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just kind of never really disliked any of them, I guess. I had trouble shifting the 4106s because you got to do it quicker than the 4104. So when I went from a 4104 to a 4106, I had to relearn shifting again. But now nah, I can't think of any bus I really disliked. Yeah. What's your favorite? I, well, you know, the Gillig Transits are just really a nice piece of machinery. They handle easy. They have good heating and air conditioning systems. Uh, they are really good transit buses. And I like the Setra coaches because they handle so good. They have such excellent handling. Uh, that's probably my favorite coach to drive. Uh, the Prevo coaches ride quiet things inside of them don't rattle the package racks don't rattle the windows don't rattle nothing mm -hmm. rattles they're nice coaches to drive too we have mcis in our fleet and there's one thing i don't like is there is no heat up front for the driver's legs and feet i'll be damned if i know why a coach <laughs> built in north dakota and Winnipeg doesn't have heat for the driver's legs and feet. Uh, they dropped that with uh, the last one was the 102 DL3. Hmm. You should. So anyway, yeah. So I have a favorite for driving, a favorite from a passenger point of view, and uh, that's it. What was that bus, uh, uh, Jason? That uh, Stan drove us around in when we were there. Was that a Prevo that was an or? MCI. That was an MCI, a new, brand new MCI. 2019. They're all really complicated now. <laughs> Probably 90% of our maintenance problems with all of the new buses is electronics. Transmissions last, engines last, wheels, brakes, all that stuff last. But computer problems plague new equipment. I remember one day I was there, John from CNJ was working on a bus and he said he had to wait four hours for the starter to cool down enough that he could get the starter out. Um, they, they must generate a lot of heat, a lot more than, than like my bus does. Engines run about 200 degrees normally. And uh, so a driver pulls in and John was there waiting for the bus. So the bus was just as hot as it could be when he got to it. So, mm. yes. Yeah. Jason, you got other... buses are a lot more compact, too, with everything jammed in there. So that probably has an effect. Whereas, like your silver side, the starter's at the back, and it's easy access to get to it. Well, the starters on those are quite easy to get to also because the engine is longitudinal. And on that particular vehicle, the... Uh, 
the uh, drop tank, the uh, dump tank for the toilet is out of the way of that. So it was just hot for John in there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they're on the side now, so they're really no, not much more difficult to service than they were when they were on the side of the engine when the engines were transverse. I think I got this mic figured out. There's only a slight little echo as long as I keep my mic muted when I'm not talking. Hmm. So something weird with your headset. Um, all I right. See, well, I see Gino's garage several posts from Gino's garage. We yeah, it see ya. Cool. It's just we're too busy to comment to everybody. I see that Scott made it back from, uh, he was down in Florida. Uh, let me see here. I don't know. I don't see any of Gino's questions. I guess while you mentioned Scott, uh, congratulations, Scott, on your daughter's wedding. Uh, hope everything went well for you. I, I, you said something about a problem. You'll probably post that. But anyway, so glad everything went well with the wedding. And pretty soon you'll have a half a dozen grandchildren crawling all over you. <laughs> and uh, you'll just love the whole thing. The grandchildren will be easy after having that dog crawl all over them. Well, that could be. Yeah, that's some dog, wasn't it? I love big dogs, but they're just a little too big, that, that breed. So how about you, Sage? What have you been up to? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up those uh, images sure. you sent me earlier, and let, let's, let's have a talk about that. Um, just give me one second. So... Yeah, let me see. So when I went down to uh, to rescue the the one bus in Ohio, and uh, first time that Tyler and I went down to Texas to get uh, start working on getting this bus back, I drove my trusty old uh, 2001 Toyota Tacoma, and I've had this bus or this uh, car for well, since 2002. I think I, I bought it from the guy very shortly after his first year. Um, and uh, I've I've got three hundred and seventy thousand miles on my uh, on my truck, and I just finally have come to the conclusion uh, when it couldn't make it back down to Texas um, that maybe it's time to start looking for something. So I uh, I have been looking. I finally I, I test drove um, uh, what a Forerunner. I tried out some Jeeps. I, I rented some cars because I keep cars for like ten years, so I, I want to try them all out. And a, a buddy of mine loaned me one of these Honda Ridgeland uh, Ridge lines, and I really like it. It um, the problem with the, the newer Tacomas is they've turned into full size pickup trucks. They're no, it was a, it was a smaller pickup. That's what I liked about it. And now the Tacoma's huge, and so I uh, I guess you see it down in there in the corner. Um, I'm going to be picking this up. I'm actually running down to Indiana to see what's going on with uh, with my. Uh, a pre-war bus, but then I'm also going to pick this up in the Indianapolis area, uh, and so it's it's really nice, pretty low miles. Um, it's it's not exactly a pickup truck. It's it's more like an SUV with a pickup bed to it, um, but it's on a truck frame. It can pull, you know, I can pull Volkswagens with it, which is really my my big concern. It's well, got a nice the bed. The towing capacity is key. That's that's hard to get these days with some of these little SUVs. Yeah, I think 5,500 pounds is the towing and so my trailer's you know 1400 it's a pretty heavy trailer but i was going to swap the trailer out for something a little lighter too and uh and so so this will be it i'm going to go down and, and grab it on tuesday i guess i pick it up and then i have to haul home but that's that's you know besides work and uh i'm getting the homeless shelter that i i uh, am a part of i'm um, getting that ready to go for the season we we start uh, taking guests this weekend um, so yeah, so, uh, we already comment that the truck is stupid. That's the one thing my friends have told me <laughs> is that, uh, prepare to be ridiculed by Ford and Chevy guys. Um, you know, they won't mess with Toyota, you know, with the, with the Tundra or the Tacoma, but that, uh, that truck pickup truck guys make fun of you in these. And so I can live with that. I, you know, I, you know, I, I, gotta, spend... I gotta be honest. I drove your, 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 your truck when I was down there. I was surprised for the age of it and the mileage, how well that truck actually still drove. I, I was pretty impressed. I've never been a, a truck guy, but it, it was all right. Yeah, I have it, a question for you, Sage. Sure. Uh, why would you want to give up that interior space? You have a lot of things to keep with you 
and you're going to give up that interior space. Why don't you look at a Dodge Journey or a Ford Explorer? I don't like big truck. I don't like big uh, uh, SUVs. I, I rented one, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I don't need it. You know, I, I don't need to spend 80% of my time driving around in a big truck because I need it 20% of the time I need a big truck. And so, uh, uh, anyway, so that's one of those, uh, uh, just things about it. So it's, it is just kind of, uh, uh, it is just kind of like that. So I'll, uh, I'll pick it up. Um, uh, you know, we'll pick it up and, uh, uh, and drive it around and stuff like that. And I, I I'm sure that I'll like it. I've driven it for a while. I mean, it drives like an SUV and, and again, I, I use my towing capacity so infrequently that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be fine. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Brake pressure test on a silver sides is the same as a modern bus. I don't know. How do you do a brake pressure test on a modern well, bus? I think Phil? they're talking about the air brakes. Um, because you're yeah. supposed to do your, your driver walk around and, and your brake check before you take off. So you need to check your, uh, your brake leak down. And like if you've got more than two PSI per minute with your foot on the brakes, that type of thing. I mean, on these old buses, I mean, on all of, all of them, you're supposed to check the stroke on the brake. Um, on these old manual adjust ones, you're, I mean, really, you're supposed to measure the, the stroke. Um, here in Ontario, it's part of your walk around. You're actually supposed to measure the stroke. And I mean, how many guys are going to climb underneath a, a full size coach to check the stroke on their diaphragms? But yeah, I think in theory, it's all still the same. That came up in Minnesota, too, and they dropped that out of the requirements. You have to show where the brake chamber is and the slack adjuster on the front wheel. Turn the wheel so you can demonstrate that you can identify those components. But as far as what you're talking about, Jason, that was dropped here in Minnesota. So did you, uh, um, did you uh, uh, get your safety test done yet, Jason? No, I haven't. Um, I got sidetracked because I've been working on a new job. So, um, oh. not actually working yet, but working on getting this job secured and a new new contract and stuff. So, I've, I've been a little bit busy with other things. Um, here, I'll show you the one thing I did get up to this week. I'll pull that slideshow back up here. Um, there it is. And uh, so, we spent an entire day, two of us, with a polisher um cleaning up my the siding on my bus um i had already done the one side by hand and this is my fr pilot friend will here who's on the screen mm -hmm. he brought over a power buffer and uh so it, it was a bit of a labored process um i did a time lapse video uh, of the whole day of us cleaning and polishing the bus and uh it, it was it was quite the process so uh it came up really good um the only thing i didn't polish is i didn't polish over where it said greyhound lines uh, if, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see on that picture there, the one stripe has a bit of a dull section, and that's because I didn't polish over where the original lettering is yet. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. I kind of wanted to keep it as a shadow. So maybe I'll tape off the Greyhound lines and polish it, or maybe I'll just get some new de decals made up. I'm not sure there. But uh, it came up pretty good. It was, I mean, between Will and I and uh, both sides, I've probably got 40 hours into cleaning the siding now, and it probably could use another 20 or 30 hours to get it to where I'd like it to be. Yeah. No, it's looking pretty slick. Um, it is anodized aluminum. Somebody was saying, well, it's 30, it's 74 years old. The anodizing is gone. I don't think so. I think that it's still on those, isn't it? Yeah, it's still there. And you can tell because if you take and go put pol uh, the polish or like I was, ac I actually wet sanded the whole bus. So if I was wet sanding the sides of the bus, it was, um, it was, it was nice and clean uh, coming off. It was like a white powdery material. Uh, substance whereas if you hit a piece of actual aluminum you get less black oxide coming off and you can tell right away if you hit bare aluminum you can see the difference um, so the anodizing is still there uh, it just needed all the crap that was on top of the anodizing cleaned off to, to bring back the shine hmm well That uh, is something I'm going to have to do. I don't I, right now. I'm sort of overwhelmed as to what I, I got to get the engine in tip-top shape first, 
and if the engine uh, uh, if the engine gets in good shape, then uh, uh, then I can you know get into the rest of it. But I, I uh, that's like the next step that I want to do. Um, so anyway, so it, it from that picture to the next one and the the ones that I've seen, it, it's it's gorgeous. I can hardly wait to to see that video of you guys, uh, you know. Uh, what it what it looks like, and I'm curious what what was the big secret? I, I've already asked you a couple times, and it sounds like you used a variety of different things on it. Well, it was a bit of trial and error in the beginning. I didn't I didn't want to burn through the anodizing, so I kind of went slow at first. I started just by uh, just with some rubbing compound by hand, and that would barely even touch it, getting all that red oxide from the roof off. And I just slowly got more aggressive. Then I went to like a 1500 grit wet sandpaper. It was the 600 grit wet sandpaper sanding with the grain that really seemed to do it. Um, a few people had suggested using the steel wool with a polish. I tried that. That does work, but I found it was uh, a bit too laborious. It was taking too long. The 600 grit worked better than the steel wool. So I actually ended up doing it in three steps. I, I did a 600 grit wet sand with just the water. Uh, soapy water and then I did uh, steel wool. I, what I actually did is I kind of combined it. I put the polish on with the steel wool and again with the grain, go with the grain and the siding and then Will followed behind me with the buffer and actually buffed the uh, the, com the compound right off the bus and that's what really brought up the shine was the buffer. I see. Did you use the quadruple odd steel wool? Yeah, I did. That. Yeah, just to, just to clarify, that's four zero steel wool so zero 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 steel wool um some some of the companies they call it like super fine there's different grades you can get which i actually didn't realize until a couple weeks ago there was different grades of steel wool to me steel wool was steel wool i didn't realize that um and then uh to take the oxide off the roof somebody was asking what's the plan um i don't know if i need to take the the oxide right off but it does need a good uh, sand down there's different paints you can get that'll seal right over it um, I'm gonna leave that to a paint expert and let them tell me what I need to do because I'm not a painter uh, I'm willing to admit that and I mean I'm gonna have a friend help me spray the bus I'll probably end up doing most of the actual spraying myself I'll start with the roof for practice but uh, um, I'm gonna talk to a painter and get their expertise on that so, yeah, so did you see, uh, there was a video sometime I just saw back there, Scott just redid his bus with that Henry's roofing tar, that the Henry stuff, and, uh, you know, that's an option. It's it's more of a vinyl paint, I think, than anything, but, you know, every, I don't know, everything you've ever been told about paint is you need a good solid base, you know, your base needs to be intact for, in order for the paint to stick, so... That gets to be tricky because you and I have the same problem. We both have that red oxide. We've got to figure out how to either stabilize it, make sure it's not going to continue to decay, or or uh, strip it out. Yeah, actually, I, I've had it rain here twice after I did the polishing on the bus. And if you mm -hmm. go to that back corner, there's, there's new red oxide starting to run down the side. I mean, I just took a cloth and wiped it off because it was fresh, but it is starting to run down again. Yeah. Huh. Try this. Uh, use a power washer that you can introduce detergent in and use dish soap and power wash it with dish soap. You don't want to leave any of that red oxide on. It's loose and it will just carry new paint off with it. See, I'm almost thinking I start by cleaning that the red oxide as best I can and then then do the siding. You know, in other words, start start at the top and work your way down. I don't know. That's... I'd cover that aluminum siding before I peel oh, off. Before, that before you do that? Yeah. Just yeah. just cover the rest of the bus. Yeah, because you'll get it down in the cracks and grooves, and then it'll be bleeding out for the next 20 years. Well, that was your Texas bus, eh, Sage? When that guy took that hot seat to it, he just kept yeah. spraying down the sides, and the red dirt just kept pouring out between the siding. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of gunk underneath there. And then, of course, it's not a brand new car, so it's never going to be perfect. I, you always have to keep that in mind. Your your luggage trays look uh, phenomenal. Uh, you did a really nice job getting that interior cleaned out. Yeah, it took a, it took a bit of work even after I, um, it was it, all that cleaning the guys did in uh, Minnesota. Like once I got at home here, I spent a couple of days cleaning out the interior uh, some more, even like scrubbing out the inside the luggage bins and everything. What's Power Stripper? Uh, isn't that someone you go down to a, a, a club for? 
No. Rodney's asking about Power Stripper and Victoria's Secret. I just remembered yeah. where I got this outfit. Speaking of Power <laughs> Strippers. <laughs> okay, Phil. <laughs> All right, let's I didn't get realize back on that tough topic here before I didn't realize Victoria's Secret sold uh, uh, smoking jackets, but. <laughs> All right. Uh, so what's power stripping? Or powder stripping? Does anybody know? Power stripping? I don't know. I, I know powder chemical stripping. stripping with chemicals, but... Yeah, you know, yeah. And that's, to me, the fear... I messed up once, uh, I, or I didn't mess it up, but I, I ended up getting into a, uh, uh, a problem where I was cleaning some of my... Uh, um, fiberglass and uh, I used, you know, chemical treatment to, to clean the, the fiberglass and it ended up making stains all over everything. I'd be f fearful of doing a chemical strip on the top of the bus, you know, that it's going to get into the aluminum and, and mess the aluminum up. Rod so Rodney that's says power, powder, powder, strip, powder strip. Powder I've not strip. heard of it. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Huh. He's probably talking about soda or walnut shells or something like that. Stay away from the soda idea. It oh, it gets you mean into everything. Blasting? Yeah, I've I've done walnuts before to strip vehicles, but yeah, like doing soda stripping. Oh, you know, with the uh, with the with the soda in there. Um, yeah, it's that's... like smoke. It just gets into everything. Yeah, yeah, and you got to watch. You got vents, and you got those windows leak, and. Yeah, that's not probably something I'm going to do. Hey, so I what got else? the heat working on my bus. I forgot to tell you guys that. I actually uh, got the heat working. I, I, I ran those um, pipes at the engine there, and I took it around the long country block, and it was actually starting to make heat by the time I pulled back in my driveway. So that's refreshing. The heater core works, and it doesn't seem to have any leaks. That's so that's great. Does, I gotta... does it blow heat out the defrosters there above the windshield? Is heat it getting all it all the way? Good. See, you guys are so far ahead with that dashboard, everything working on the dashboard. Um, I mean, I, I have my defrosters and everything, but, of course, there's a big hole in the back of them. I'm going to have to seal that up. So. Well, I think there's, uh, Rodney mentioned, I think they were those flexible stainless tubes that run forward to the defroster. So they're probably still in there. You just need to reintroduce the, the feed somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, I, like I said, it's it, there's a lot of different things. I'm just going to get it mechanically sound. Uh, I want to be able to drive this thing in May down to this bus show. Which Phil, are you going to this this bus show down in Birmingham, Alabama, in May? I plan on it, but uh, we're right now kind of just taking a looking at it as to what's going to happen with our pandemic. Yeah, that could that could scuttle the whole program. So right now, uh, Stan is in negotiations, uh, taking care of all that business and getting everything ready. Whether we go or not is not determined at this time. Oh, it's still up in the air again. Okay. Well, as far as I know it is, uh, if the yeah. pandemic is still going on, I'm not sure if I want to expose myself. Right. Uh, I'm getting too damned old to run around with a bunch of sick well, at people. The, at the rate this pandemic stuff's going, I don't even think the border's going to be open in next year in time for me to make it. Like, I'd love to make it to some of these bus rallies, but until things start to clear up, it's it's not really going to be doable. Yep. Well, so you, uh, you got your bus cleaned up. I'm looking at a new car. And Phil's in his Hugh Hefner smoking jacket. There, I do. I'm glad you noticed that, yes. Yes. Ain't I pretty? <laughs> Let's get back to talking about buses, huh? Sure. All right. So what's your next question, Jason? Oh, we can hear you. Ah. Uh, so... Well, you and I can talk to him, Sage, while he's at it. Sure. We, uh, uh, you know, for the most part, I've got a lot of work. One of the things I've been going back and forth is to buy a, a new block that was rebuilt in 1960s. Oh, guess who wants a bus? Don't tell me your daughter now wants a bus. Are you going to have three silver sides in your family? This is a question from Scott. Um 
I missed oh. it. It must have scrolled off before. Oh, he was in there. Well, congratulations, Scott. You must have brought them up right. Well, they they went all the I guess think they went all the way down to Florida in the bus. I don't know if they came back with uh, with them. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, when that would be one hell of a honeymoon coming back on an old bus. Can you imagine a family reunion. You're going to have to rent a parking lot to to have a family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> can you can you just picture them crammed into that back bedroom? And it's the first time nobody's been looking at him. And in the middle of everything, a big dog jumps on him. That's, well, that's well they, they could go for um, family drives with all three buses and hold up traffic. That's for sure. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Well, that that would be. Tell her to get something else, man, besides the silver sides. 4104 or, I don't know, tell her to get, tell her to get like a brand new Prevo. Um, yeah, so, that would be a good buy. I mean, there's a lot. I, I, you know, I've been watching, you know, we, Jason and I kind of watch things and, uh, you can get a, a really nice big, you know, newer, long roomy bus for not a whole lot of money anymore. Yeah. There's a lot of bus companies right now that are shut down and there's a lot of buses I'm sure that leasing companies own and they're just sitting, um, if you wanted to buy a newer one, I'm, there's some great deals out there if you look around. I mean, even even tires, like the common tires, the tire distributors are sitting on tires that aren't being sold. Like, you picked up those 211 11 steer tires mm -hmm. for your bus. Would you pay, like, 300 bucks for a brand new pair or something? Yeah, for the pair, it was $300 delivered. Well, that's, that's something. Uh, JD at, at uh, C&J Bus in Bloomington, Minnesota, mm -hmm. is a bus dealer, and he'd be a good one to check. Somebody's asking me a question about COVID, if it's getting any better up here in Canada. Um, the numbers up here in Canada are a lot lower than what's happening in the U.S., but we are in a second wave, and they are definitely higher than our first wave. There's still nothing like... Um, the, uh, a lot of other countries, but the numbers are, are getting up there, and it, it, it is concerning. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes long term. We had uh, the four largest single days in a row uh, this week here, and we've had uh, we've had four people pass away this this week, and that's the most we've had since this whole thing started. So we're, you know, I've been really cautious. I, you know, my wife we were sort of splitting our time between here and New York now. And we've been talking a lot about it. Like, you know, are we going to end up with the kids at home again? And my son texts me today, just this, so you heard it here first folks. Um, he said that he uh, has a friend who's involved in the uh, paper products industry and that there will be another run on toilet paper and paper towel. So get, get stocked up now. Cause uh, you'll Speaking thank me. Toilet paper. You want to hear something crazy? Um, What's the, that? The one town here close to us, Kitchener, uh, it was definitely arson, I think, but somebody went and set the toilet paper aisle on fire in Walmart, and they did it at three different Walmarts in the same city in the same day. Wouldn't you think that after the first one, all the Walmarts would have been warned? Yeah, I don't know well, but I mean... Pretty crazy. So there's somebody's a specialized arsonist, huh? So, uh, Jason, other bus questions that we've got for Phil here while we while we were chatting with him. I mean, I've got so many. It's going to be more along the lines of I'm going to pick up the phone when I can't figure something out because uh, probably the electrical is the big thing. I mean, the big enemy of electric in buses is corrosion, right? Just just rust or, or corrosion. The big enemy for the terminals is corrosion. The big enemy for the wiring is rodents. Uh, Jason's bus does not appear to ever have had rodents involved. So you're locked out on that one, Jason. Uh, yeah, I haven't found evidence of any rodents whatsoever anywhere in my bus. The only thing I found was residu residue of bird crap from where the windows were missing. And the birds got in. Um, but as far as rodents, I haven't seen anything. Um, yeah. Rod Rodney wins the rodent award for old silver sides, I think. 
I've put some bait. I put some of that, uh, the, the, the food that they'll eat it and then they, they will leave your bus and then maybe die. Uh, I've put a couple of those in both of my buses in key areas in the channel and stuff like that. And that's been a pretty effective strategy for, you know, keeping them out. Um, I put, I put, uh, Irish spring soap in my, my Volkswagens when I winterize them. And that has actually worked really well. I did get a squirrel or something into, uh, my Eurovan at one point. And when I started doing that, I even put one in the engine compartment on the battery so that when I go to start it in the spring, it's right there. I, I don't forget to take it out, but, uh, uh, they don't like that smell and they, they tend to stay away. Now I know why I have no squirrels in my bathtub. Oh, well, yeah, that's probably it. Okay. What was your electrical question? Pick an electrical question. I've Steve. just got some, I, I mean, with, with mine, I guess the, the big thing that I, you know, I've been watching Jason with his regulator and you have, uh, um, you know, Rodney, just when he is in the process of rebuilding his system, he just got a bunch of relays and things along those lines on an on an older bus like that. What really needs to be relayed? In other words, what needs to have uh, uh, a, a relay as part of its system? If you're talking about a DC generator, mm -hmm. you need a relay that will disconnect the battery when the generator stops putting out a voltage typically 11 volts, uh, that, that relay will have a spring load that will cause it to pull open when the coil voltage drops below 11 and a half volts or 11 volts, and it won't pull back in again until the voltage is up about 12.3, 12.4 volts on a DC generator. On an AC generator, or, a, or an alternator rather, uh, there's no voltage going back in from the batteries because of the built-in diodes. So you don't need a relay on those. In fact, uh, on our transits, a quick way to give them a jump start is just drive up right behind, touch the bumpers, and run a hot lead to the alternator on the back of the engine. Hmm. And and that takes you right to the batteries. Yeah, that's the problem with my bus is there's no voltage cutout relay on the generator. And somebody's put that uh, uh, diode, uh, what do you call it, the rectifier in place of a relay. So it, it's got a rectifier, which is generally to convert AC to DC voltage. And they're using it um, as, as, a, as, as like a one-way trap so that the voltage will come out of the generator but not go back in and the problem is the way they've wired it um it's basically using the uh the diodes through the rectifier like is that big zener diode basically and diodes in 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 parallel don't work because the current only goes through the path of least resistance so even though there's three 70 amp diodes it's only going to go through one until it burns it out then it's going to go to the next one so by the time i got home two of the three diodes in that rectifier had burned out and the third one had actually gotten pretty hot and was starting to get loose in the rectifier as well. So I put another rectifier on it for now just so that it works, but I got to get some kind of a cutout and kick that rectifier out of there. I had hoped I would have one of my 150 amp diodes here at the house and I didn't. I threw them all in a box and hauled them to the garage. So uh, I don't have any with me, but that would work. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, one I, big 150 amp one would solve the problem. I looked around online and I, I, I had a hard time finding one that, that was that big. They're somewhere. I, I got them online. I don't remember what company had them. Even 70 amp uh, with a uh, high tolerance, there are 70 amps that will take heavier peak loads uh, in the event that you're starting up your heater fans, which... Uh, has about a uh, about a quarter of a second uh, hundred amp surge, uh, and a seventy amp diode, which is pretty common, will take that surge. Hmm. Well, I, I think that's what probably fried those diodes. Was I started playing with the heater circuit, getting the fans working? Yeah, and those fans are old, and maybe they're not all running. So one might be just drawing dead, or what they called stalled current, which would be over 100 amps. 
So make sure that I think there are two on that bus. I think I'm there's not three. Sure. They're I'm not good. one in the basement, and then there's the two that are up in the uh, up in the cab up in the ducks. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. So but here's I'm a question. Not sure, they all start at the same time, though. Yeah, what is uh, it, Sage? One question was: uh, Have you ever been around a? It, it looks like Canuck 500 or 600. Was that a bus brand, Canuck? I guess not. I'm not uh, sure. If he hears I, you. You've never heard. You've never heard of that. Well, that's a slang term for Canadians. I've never heard of a bus like that. Oh. I okay. think somebody's pulling your leg there. They're asking Sage. a question. Somebody had asked if uh, I found anything as uh, cool as what Jason has found in his bus. And uh, the answer is that my bus was a camper. Um, and so uh, Jason's was more of a working bus. So he had a lot of spare things that you need that, that if you break down the middle of driving, you really should have an extra. Uh, mine, for some reason, all that stuff was gone. And so, uh, so mine, I think the, I don't know, I can't even think of what the coolest thing I found. I mean, we had extra, uh, lamps, and glass and stuff like that, but, um, nothing really jumped out, uh, that, uh, that I found in my bus that I thought was really neat. Um, I, I just think it was ironic. We spent that whole time with no reverse on your Texas bus and, and the, you, you had one sitting in yours. Yeah. It's sitting in that. I haven't tested it yet, so I don't know if it works yet, but, uh, I I've got it here. So that's a question. You know the the uh, uh, points that are on the reverse solenoids. Uh, uh, Phil, can you find those anymore? In other words, to rebuild if the points got burned, or do you just do you just sand them? I just fix them myself. Yes. Okay. So what what do you do? Just clean them up? Yeah, pull oh. it apart and just clean them. Okay. Uh, and then blow everything out so that there's nothing that'll get back onto the surfaces again. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. There's... A lot of times, uh, excuse me, Jason, a lot of times it's not the points. As you saw in that one video I produced, uh, uh, people just turn those screws, don't tighten things down properly and pull the wires off of the coil, you know, as you saw with that smaller solenoid I was working on. Okay. Yeah, that's a good possibility because there, yours isn't doing anything, Sage. It's not even trying to engage. So I I'm think not... it's seized. I got to, I mean, I, I we can't, it's very hard to move it in and out. Have you measured the coil with an ohmmeter? No, I got to pull it off and do it on a bench. I it, it, it might, I mean, there's a possibility I'm not even getting uh, power to it. But we did test it. We did put power to it with my power, uh, you know, with my power probe, and uh, it wasn't actuating. So could you hear it or feel it trying to do something? It wasn't trying to do anything. No, okay, nothing at all. Was there a spark? No, nope, no spark. There was no current draw at all. So it's almost like the wires disconnected inside. Okay. Yep. So, I've got uh, I've got part of one that Rodney sent me, but I I want to get that back to him if I don't need it, and uh, so. So that's that's probably one of those things on the list of get dones. Yeah, there's there's been a bunch of suggestions of what to use for the diodes or where to get them. Um, so thank you guys. I'll, I'll look into that um, for sure. Um, there's a question here for Phil. I saw. Whoop, I just scrolled past it. Where'd it go? Uh, it says, Phil, have you ever got an old spicer jammed between reverse gears on shutdown? I'm not quite sure what the two things have to do with each other. Uh, Maybe he's talking uh, about when you get them jammed between the gears on a silver side. I'm not sure, but uh, the question. All right. Well, let's go with that. Let's start with that and leave the shutdown part out. Yes, uh, here is what I have suggested is that you shift in an H pattern. That is this way, back this way, back this way, and back this way. Do not shift in a Z pattern like this, down and then diagonally back and down. You have to get these two in neutral before you can move over and operate the other two. If you go diagonally, the first two 
are mixed up with the second two and are jammed. And that's what people do. I've watched people do it. I have beat on their heads to get them to do it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And still they go from here diagonally up to here. And I said, oh, I did it the way you told me to do it. And I said, well, then uh, get off the bus and go home. <laughs> uh, well, we've been on for like an hour and a half. And not that I have like any, anything. Well, not that I have anything else going on, but uh, but for the sake of uh, everybody, we should maybe start asking for our last questions. Yeah, well, I'm starting to get a little you. chilly I'm, here. So uh, if you've got a heater on in the bus and it's still, it's. Uh, I think it's going to be around freezing tonight here, so we're, we're getting close to freezing. Do you hear that, folks? Do you hear that? What they're really doing is they're getting bored with this whole session. Oh, I'm <laughs> not bored. I can talk about buses for another three days. about being cold. Yeah, yeah, we know what's going on there, Jason. You want to get back in the house, that's all. You're tired of all of this, I know. I mean, they're they're... They're piling on top of each other to get in here. All right, whatever you guys say. It's not so Gino, Gino was saying a Blue Sea automatic charging relay is better than a diode. So I don't know what that is, but... Uh, I don't either. Is it still within view here? It's one of the, it's one of the last questions oh, that I came see across. It. Yeah. I don't know what that is. But this is a business you never stop learning. Right. Probably Google it, huh? I suppose. Uh, so let's see. It's 70 and raining in South Carolina right now, says Rodney. It is 38 and it's about ready to snow here. We're going to have a low overnight tonight of uh, 33. So we'll have some snow tonight. And we'll have some snow tomorrow here. And then mostly cloudy and the highs will be right about 45. So nice fall weather here. I don't know. What's it doing up in Minnesota? We always seem to get what you have about a day and a half later. It has been cloudy and chilly and windy and snowy for 10 straight days now. Wow. Uh, you guys have yeah. been having snow for 10 days already. Well, yeah, but it's it's been up in the mid-30s, so it, just, it falls, but it doesn't accumulate. We had six inches, what, Monday, last Monday, no, last Wednesday? And there's some of that left, but all the rest of it just melts as soon as it drops. So anyway, it was enough to get the snowblower out. Anyway. So, really? You've already yeah. been blown snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and then the city, Columbia Heights is really good about snow applying. I mean, they're out right away. As soon as it, it lets up, they're out with the plows. They have the whole city done in four hours. Uh, so twice I had to uh, come back and clean up after them. Uh, they, what they do is when they see my driveway all cleaned out and they look and then, then they step on the gas, see, and just go like hell and dig into a big berm. And <laughs> then as they pass, they're going, ha ha, gotcha. Well, uh, we don't have our plow trucks are not out yet. We're still raking leaves. Oh, well, the leaves are under the snow, so yeah. that took care of the raking. Boy, I damn near got caught with a job. Just, I do have to get up in the gutter, so, but all the leaves aren't off the trees yet, so. Wow. So anyway, the, okay, the if you guys want to knock it off, okay. Yeah, it was, a, it was a great yes. session. I, I enjoyed having everybody here talking, and uh, for those who don't know, uh, Bus Old Man Phil has his own channel. It's it's in the link uh, below for my for the, for the live tonight and Sage's uh, link is there as well. Um, so if you haven't uh, liked and subscribed, those guys, um, you can go subscribe to their channels and they've got some great videos up to watch too. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us, Phil. It was great to have you tonight. It was certainly entertaining. Well, thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed being here. We'll have to do this All again right. sometime. And the you sooner and I, the better. You and we I. Can, Oops, we can sorry. share a lot of information with people, and that's my main goal, is I want people to know things that I know. Uh, because uh, one of these days, I'm going to assume room temperature, and people like Jason 
and Sage are going to have to pick up where I left off. By the way, you can support my wife and dogs too and make the house payments. And so anyway. Yeah, yeah. Phil's channel's got lots of good technical stuff on fixing old buses and uh, yeah, go check out his channel. It's it's good information. So Phil's trying to document as much as he can and we're, we'll be happy to carry on the legacy. And for the latecomers, if you have asked me a question, I haven't deliberately passed it, and Jason and Sage don't either, but we do get involved in conversations and things do scroll off. If you have a question that, for me, you can ask it in the form of a comment on any one of my recent uh, channel posts. So anyway, well, thank you again, guys. It was a pleasure. It was fun working on your bus for, while you were here. I really enjoyed that time. I was sad when you left, in fact. But anyway, I'll be looking forward to all of us together again uh, when this thing goes away. And uh, I don't have anything coming up now. It might be a couple of weeks before I have anything to post. Uh, but I'll take suggestions. So thank you. Love you all. Goodbye and God bless. Yeah, thanks everybody for watching tonight. So He's got to get up and walk. He's got to walk back out that door. Who has to? You do. Oh, you, you, you came oh, in. Everybody's, everybody's, everybody has to see your uh, big. Uh... All right. And <laughs> just for your information, I did not violate your rule. <laughs> oh, here we go. All Bye. Right. Yeah, I'm going to sign off too. Uh, Jason, we'll, uh, we'll do this next Sunday. What do you think? Yeah, we'll see I'll, you guys I'll, next Sunday. Thank you for watching. I'll have more to talk about. I'm sure you will too. And uh, thanks for joining us for our, what we call Sunday night dinner. So 